Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Beta FPV 85X 4K. Now, previously on the channel I reviewed the Gap RC Cine Pro 4K and it's an absolute beast. It's one of my favourite models and not just in this CineWoop class either, but also the 2 inch class in general. However, on paper, the Beta 85X 4K beats it on almost every spec. For example, its dry weight is 90 grams against the Cine Pro's 132 grams with a smaller footprint to go with it. Yet it's still using the same spec 1105 5000 kV motors, so it's a 4S model using the same 2 inch Emacs blades. It's also using the Cadex Tarsier 4K camera and it's housed in proper plastic just like the 85X HD Turtle version which produced no Jallo whatsoever. And the Cadex Tarsier is mounted so that the micro SD card is easily accessible rather than being blocked by a protector. And both buttons can be reached, although you do have to have long fingernails to get to them, and they are reversed compared to the Cine Pro 4K. But it's better than stretching a protector and potentially breaking something. And despite it being that much lighter, they have even managed to provide a circular polarized antenna rather than a linear one. And just like the Cine Pro 4K, it's available with a multitude of receivers. So you're going to have to click the link in the description to see because there are just too many to list. This is the XM Plus version flashed with the RSSI on the auxiliary 12. And this time there is a place for the antennas to go. And it even has 32-bit ESCs, so this is the one to get, right? Nope. Not even close, unfortunately. In fact, the only reason to get the 85X 4K over the Cine Pro 4K is if you are only flying indoors and need a smaller footprint. But you know what? I would still get the Gap RC. Go watch my video where I fly it in my house with its narrow corridors, rooms and doors. The reason the 85X is lighter is because they have gone with a bottom mounted battery. So we've got all of this weight at the top with the camera and the VTX and a load of weight at the bottom making it impossible to fly outdoors which you will see later. But if you take a look at the Cine Pro 4K everything is on the same level so its weight distribution is much better causing it to fly like it doesn't have protectors at all. You can also remove the protectors and fly it as a two inch freestyle model if you like because the protectors are not integral to the frame and before the crazies out there start hammering the keyboard with comments like what is this a review of the 85 HD or the Cine Pro 4K? The answer is neither. My job is to tell you where to best spend your money. If you're in the market for something like this and there is a model that is cheaper and flies better and has better specs, it's going to get a lot of mentions and if there wasn't a better model then there would be no mention of it, which is why there aren't going to be any mentions other than now of the iFlight Cinebee. You can check out my review of that model as well on the channel. What I do want to show you is that despite the 85X 4K being borderline unflyable outside, it absolutely oozes quality. For example, the frame isn't just relying on the plastics for the integrity of the frame. They have used a carbon plate underneath to make sure that it's rigid. It comes with a fitted high quality LiPo strap, which will fit up to a 600 milliamp 4S. It doesn't come with a LiPo, and I think they recommend a 450 milliamp 4S, but i go bigger to get longer flight times because either way, this guy isn't going to do acro outdoors. They have pre-installed some silicon strips and the receiver is tension fitted so it easily pulls out so that you can bind it to your transmitter. And as I mentioned earlier, the ESCs are 32-bit just like the Cine Pro 4K. But this is when it starts to lose its value for money because 
I don't like to mention prices on the channel as they switch them around all of the time and both the 85X 4K and the Cine Pro 4K models are both expensive for what they are but at the making of this video the 85X 4K costs more than the advanced version of the Cine Pro 4K with its 30 amp ESCs, its F7 dual gyro flight controller running Betaflight 4 with a perfect tune and a 500 milliwatt VTX. The 85X 4K has 16 amp ESCs which actually should be enough and to be fair they have added a capacitor to the XT30 connector but when you think about the price between these two would you rather have 30 amp ESCs in reserve or 16 amp? Then we have the flight controller which in the 85X 4K is an F4 there were a few things in the setup which needed to be changed. For example, air mode was set up on a switch rather than being permanently selected. D-Shot commands were set up for a lost model alarm, but only turtle mode was set up in the modes tab and a lost model alarm wasn't set up in the modes tab. The on-screen display wasn't too bad, but I had to remove the crosshairs and in hindsight I'd also remove all of the current information because the scaling was way out. I mean, you could try and calibrate the current meter. Then we have the VTX which has pit mode and is power switchable via smart audio from 25 milliwatt up to 200 milliwatt. You can't really change the angle of the Tarsier camera either due to the limited space in the cowling. Whereas again on the CinePro 4K, it virtually has no restrictions on the camera angle. You do also get more spares with the Cine Pro 4K including a spare set of props and with the 85X 4K you just get one set of props. You do however get given the new ND8 filter for the Tarsier camera but that does suggest it might be needed to reduce jello on sunny days whereas you get no jello at all with the Cine Pro 4K in any condition. You are also given the Cadex controller for the FPV camera and the connector just pops out of the side. You might need to get a screwdriver just to feed it out if you need to change any of the settings. Now I know it sounds like I've been trashing the 85X 4K but I did find a good use for it in the end and I'm sure there are people out there that will love this thing and tell me that I'm doing cine whoops wrong but FPV is a bit like art to me and there is no right or wrong way to fly as long as you are enjoying yourself. So I'm not going to take anything away from the build quality of the model and the amount of work that has clearly gone into this product but for me at the end of the day it's all about how it flies so let's go and check it out. Now by this point you are probably absolutely sick and tired of hearing me talk about the GEP RC model and how much better it is than the 85X 4K. So I thought it would only be fair to show you where this model excels. You see I'm lucky enough to be a member of an indoor sports hall flying club and it flies absolutely superb here. I mean watch this, I'm even able to do acro with it and you might be thinking what were you talking about earlier where you were saying it flies terrible and you can't do acro or anything like that with it well indoors you can and with this being a smaller footprint this might be the better model compared to the gap rc because it is a bigger model and look at this we have got a really tiny gate which is actually designed to fly but it's not quite there yet but anyways I'm going to skip on because I got a really long flight time out of this I mean look at this we are three minutes in here now I was using a 650 milliamp 4s lipo and I did use a 450 milliamp 4S LiPo, but outside it was still doing its crazy maneuvers like your washouts and things like that. So I thought it's probably best just to use a bigger LiPo. And if you are flying it indoors like this, as you can see, we aren't having any problems. I think I just had one 
snap on the yaw, which you'll see a little bit later. But yeah, the HD footage is great, of course, you can do 4K. This isn't a review of the Tarsier camera. Go and check out my CinePro 4K video where I go in depth on the Tarsier camera. But I've actually got the HD recording in 1440p here and I've dynamically stretched it to 16 by 9 and as I've mentioned in other videos I'm not allowed to show you how to do that because I got given a copyright strike I'm hoping that Bruce Simpson from RC Model Reviews and XJet is gonna come up with a video soon but I think it's actually here there, did you see it? That snappy maneuver, it did that on its own and when you fly this guy outdoors it is only amplified by that, I guess by the wind, you know we're indoors here and there is no resistance. But if we just take a quick look at the FPV feed, the camera is great we do tend to get quite a bit of multipathing in this hall, I think it's the material that the walls and the roof is made out of and you can see I've had a crash there so this is a good time to demonstrate turtle mode and because it's got that high canopy then turtle mode works fine so yeah indoors this is a great model Outdoors though, I'm afraid the results aren't so great. I mean, first of all, it was really jerky to fly in a straight line and I've got a roll nailed in one direction and in the other direction. So let's go for a third. Yep, that was meant to be a roll and it did that maneuver all by itself and then that snappy yaw maneuver it did all by itself. In fact, it was virtually uncontrollable. And you could say, oh, well, you know, city whoops aren't for that, and you meant to fly them on a calm day, but just look at that again, snapping. These conditions that I'm flying in were fairly windy conditions. However, the GEP RC model flew in these exact same conditions, and I had full control. And there were times when I just didn't have any control of this model whatsoever. Now the sun is out and I'm not using the ND filter and we aren't really getting any jello. It's only when you get that dark dynamic range that you see jello when the sun is out. But again, I'm trying to do acro with this thing and completely failing. But if we switch over to the DVR cam, you can see that we've got a great picture even though the model seems to have a mind of its own at the moment and one thing I thought was interesting as well is that because you've got these two separate cameras you aren't getting any jello on the DVR footage but there's a chance that you could be getting jello on the 4K camera because it's separate and they both react to vibration slightly differently whereas with a split style camera you are seeing what it's recording so if you're seeing jello through the screen then you're getting it on your recording so I was trying to think of a downside of this Tarsier camera because I absolutely love it and I think that is it but you can see I'm just now giving up with Acro and trying to do some smooth low down shots and it is just not wanting to do it. I did get a four point roll in there just about but yeah not great for outside I'm afraid and you can see all of these maneuvers that it's doing where it just violently I mean I don't know what that maneuver was whatsoever and also check out the current meter so we're four minutes in here and it's saying 1500 milliamp on a 650 milliamp 4S and again you're probably thinking oh you should be using a smaller and a lighter battery I did and it did exactly the same so my suggestion with this model is go big on the battery because at least you'll get an amazing flight time which would beat the CinePro 4K but unfortunately that is the only thing for me at least 
that it does beat that model on. Now I'm skipping towards the end of the flight here because I've actually found a gap that I didn't know was there before and hey maybe the fact that this model is smaller has allowed me to get in here. Now a few years ago they did cut all of this away but it's grown back and there are a lot of ghost branches in there and I've made many attempts with other models, bigger models actually, 5 inch models and I've always ended up crashing into a ghost branch but as you can see I'm just slowly finding my way in here and you know this is the sort of thing that you can do with these Cinewoop models and yeah it was interesting and also the DVR didn't break up although I have to say I am fairly close to myself there now just look at the flight time as well we are coming up to a six minute flight time so that's really good I think but you know it's just not flying great outside look at that 2200 milliamp yeah it's not got that lipo on there anyways this next flight believe it or not is done when the sun is out but I've got the ND8 filter attached to the camera so if I switch to the DVR footage you'll see that it looks lighter than the HD footage so that is what the ND8 filter does with this camera however it wasn't really needed because I wasn't getting that much jello I think with the iFlight CineB 4K that was getting a lot of jello so I think the ND8 filter is needed there but not really with this model so that was just my findings but I do think it's great that they've got an ND8 filter because obviously the Tarsier camera it has got multiple applications where it can be used and sometimes there's going to be a lot of vibrations there and the ND filter is going to slow down that shutter speed and will reduce the jello. Now one thing that I haven't talked about yet is the fact that the Tarsier camera actually came with a speck of dust on the 4x3 HD sensor. Now I really thought Cadex had sorted this problem out because in the early days with their FPV cameras there would always be a speck on the sensor and it was really annoying and it might not show up on YouTube because it's actually quite a big speck of dust and it's spread out but it's there on the flights that I did outside it's not there on the flight that I did indoors and that's because I used an air blower now this is very important an air blower is very different than an air duster an air blower is basically just a pump and it just blows pure air so you unscrew the top lens which is where the HD sensor is and then you pump the air into it and it blows all of the dust away don't use an air duster because it's got liquid in it and if you spray that liquid into the sensor then you are not going to get great results anyways I'm gonna leave you with some flying if you are interested in this model I will link it in the description in the below and if you can afford to do so I'll also link to my patreon and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers I want to go so take me to Neverland find a way where is the god that i need can i get some help today lord help me with the blood that i bleed i want to know if you beat the shoulder that i need i want to go so 
Take me to Neverland Anxiety Taking over me I can't Be the only one left No Yeah.